Ladies and gentlemen, once in a while, opportunities come and you just seize it. I must say, this morning, this actual morning, about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, I actually went on my phone. Actually, I thought of a gentleman. His name is David Imoniete. Okay? And I messaged him and said, well done in your new adventures, your new ventures. He's on to some new ventures, I believe. And I just messaged him, all to the blue. And he messaged me back and said, I'm on my way to London in four hours. <laughs> now, I was really amazed by that because I said, wow, this is David Imoniete. He's from a, a, a major organization which he has moved away from. And he has this, this new thrust which is called, I believe. And I said, listen, can I interview you later? And he said, yes. Now, what is so inc incredible about this whole process is that there are times, and listen to this carefully, when God opens a door, doors just keep opening. You just keep walking through, walking through, walking through. So without any further ado, David, how are you? Hey, Sylvan, how are you? Listen, what are you doing in London? <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> let me say thank you for, for inviting me on yeah. to your show, and congratulations to you yes. and all the success that you're having. And I was actually coming down to see some family and take care of some business as well. Yes. Uh, I've got an event that I'll be speaking at mm. uh, tomorrow tomorrow morning. So yeah. when I saw your message, uh, it felt very warm. Yes. Uh, so I wanted to respond and, yes. and uh, say thank you for awesome. that message. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I, I thought that whenever I see Americans coming to the UK at this time, I, I think they're running away from <laughs> Trump or something like that. They're, <laughs> they're, they're Brexiting the, the, the US, you know? All right. But, so they, David, one of the re key reasons why I really wanted to get you on this show for this period of time, I was actually going to do a Facebook Live, but I said, I, so grab the team and say, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Transition, David. Yeah. Now, you have just moved from a major organization mm -hmm. and stepping into the I Believe Factor, which you're going to explain, but we want to touch on transition. Mm -hmm. Now, before we do that, tell me about I Believe. You know, the I Believe movement is really about getting people, God's people, into action. Yes. I believe that everybody that actually goes out and accomplishes mm -hmm. anything in life, it's predicated on their belief. Yes. There, is, there are certain elements, there are certain factors mm -hmm. that really, really empower you to believe and go out there mm -hmm. and accomplish great things. Yeah. So I've really dedicated my life mm -hmm. to, to teaching people all around the world really how to believe. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that, that all things are possible to those that believe. But how do I go about doing it? After you believe. You know, how do I believe? Yes. Because I'm not going to take action unless I believe. Yes. And if I don't take action, I never get to the results mm -hmm. that I'm actually looking for. Mm -hmm. So it's about raising the bar, raising people's belief systems, raising their actions so they can raise the results in their mm -hmm. life. And this is all undergirded by a spiritual factor. Absolutely. God, of course. Absolutely. Isn't it, is it very interesting that uh, many times you see like society is moving away from God. Mm. But when we get into crisis, the first person that everyone calls upon is Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. You know? Now, absolutely. the transition process is what I want to talk about, is that there are many persons now in their 40s, in their 30s, in their 20s, there's no more like a 9 to 5 factor. Mm -hmm. They're saying, I've got to step into something. What are some of the key ingredients that would you say persons need to lay hold of when mm -hmm. they are transitioning? And if you can even give a little nugget, because I believe there's a book in you, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is coming soon. Yes. So if there's any nugget that your experience when you move from the major organization to stepping out as a, I believe, mm -hmm. coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do believe that everybody on this earth has a purpose yes. and has a calling on their lives. And it's so important for you to understand that you're not going to live a full life yes. until you step into that purpose. Uh, what you're doing right mm -hmm. now, that's your purpose. It's, yeah. what, it's what kept you up at 3 o'clock in yes. the morning. Yes. It's what drove you to send me that message. Mm -hmm. Without that purpose, you're sleeping. Yes. You, you see what I'm saying? So everybody's got that. So when I looked at my life mm -hmm. and the direction that it was going, yes, things were going well. Uh, financially, we had been taken care of. Mm -hmm. We had done extremely well in business. But I wasn't fulfilling the purpose. Yeah. I wasn't fulfilling the calling. And what happens is you will start to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. This is when you know it's time for transition. This is when you know it's time for change. When you start to feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. in a comfortable situation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to stop right there. So what you're saying is that 
when persons starting to feel uncomfortable in that comfort zone, yes, that is when. But what if you miss it? You can miss it, isn't it? Of course. Right. And you can miss it for years. <clears throat> yeah. You know, you look at Moses. Mm. Moses, there was a call in his life from birth. Yes. He actually didn't step into that call until he was 80 years old. Yes. He found out what his call was at 40, and he ran for 40 years. Yes. So you, you, you may not step. I've known that I would have to make this transition mm. for years. But the courage to go out and take that step. Yes. That's where your belief now to say, okay, I'm going to trust you, God. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to trust this environment that I'm in. I'm not going to trust uh, the organization that I'm in. I'm, I'm going to trust the money that I yeah. have. Yes. I'm going to trust you and say that you're going to be the one mm -hmm. to undergird what this mission is about yeah. because it's about him, mm -hmm. you know, to impact a billion people's lives, you know, and I, I said, well, Lord, when they hear me, let them hear you. Yeah. When they see me, let them see you. Yeah. So this is about you. So you're mm -hmm. going to see it through. Right. You right. know, but when you start to feel uncomfortable, because see, your environment is everything. The mm -hmm. environment that you're in really creates who you are. Yes. The people that you surround yourself with. Right. Mm -hmm. So the people that are in your life right now, are they celebrating your purpose? Yeah. Or are they tolerating you? Right. If you're around people that are tolerating you, that's a sign it's time for you to move. Right. Because they're choking that dream that God has on the inside of you. You know, the information that you're downloading, mm -hmm. is, it, is, it, is it moving you towards what God has called you to do? Yes. That yes. inner voice, that, that, that peace that you're going to have yes. when you start moving, that freedom that you will have when you start moving in your purpose. So therefore, you're talking about the, uh, there's a point in person's life where they have to make that step. Now, but what I'm talking about, David, now, now, if they don't make that step, you, may, many hear, you always hear about persons who, they say many people die, and people are in the cemetery with many dreams. Mm -hmm. I mean, in network marketing, one of the powerful things about, you know, dream big at the same time. Mm -hmm. But people will miss the mark. How do we take back the missing section and go back and capture it? Mm -hmm. Number one, you have to be aware. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to the mall and there's that map, yeah. the very first thing you're looking for is not where you want to go. You already know where you want to go. Yeah. What you're looking for is that red dot that says, this is where you are. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware of where it is that you are. Because if you're unaware, you're not going to want to make change. Yes. So once you're aware of where you are, now you have to accept it. Yes. Right? Then you start the process of reconditioning. Mm -hmm. Reconditioning your mind. You know, with the words that you're speaking, yes. reconditioning your mind with what you're visualizing and what you're feeling. Yes. See, your feelings, a lot of times you say, don't be in your feelings, but mm -hmm. God gave you that. Yes. He gave you that intuition for you to know, is this someone I need to be connected to? Yeah. Is this an environment that I need to be in? Is this, is this where you want me to be at this particular time mm -hmm. in my life? Because mm -hmm. at, at the age of 21, when I became an entrepreneur, yeah. there's been people that have come into my life every time I've made a transition. Yes. Without the transition, I'm not sitting down with you right now. Mm -hmm. There would be no reason for you to send me a message. Yes. But the transition that you're going to make yes. and people that are watching this, yes. it's going to introduce new people into your life. Yes. People that celebrate you. Yes. People that say, hey, you know what? That guy has something on him mm -hmm. and I want to be a part of it. You know, you know one of the things that I, I, I met a gentleman once and I, I you know, the the parable or the same when Jesus is walking in mm -hmm. the sand there. Mm -hmm. Two persons are walking and then the person said, but Jesus, where were you at some point when there were just two footprints? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I carried you. Mm -hmm. And they talk about that moment whereby Jesus carried a person, the footprints in the sand. Now I change it to a certain extent. I say, you will have persons that will stamp a footprint in your life at certain key moments. That doesn't mean to say they're going to be with you all the while. Mm -hmm. But as you rightly say, that moment, that footprint, that actually take you to the next level. Yes, yes. That's really powerful. Yeah, yeah. and you're gonna have you're gonna have mentors, mm -hmm. you're gonna have coaches, you're gonna have people that come into your life that inspire you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think inspiration is the greatest gift that we can give another human yeah. being, and I have had that in my life, uh, starting with my parents. Yes. Uh, my dad was a professional tennis player, so I grew up in that environment mm -hmm. of someone who was a star. 
someone who inspired other people yeah. with his play. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then as I became an entrepreneur, there were several people that came into my life. And the people that I've, in, I've never even met, mm -hmm. people that I just listened to mm -hmm. on audios that have made a major difference in my life. And now when I meet people, they say the same thing. Yeah. That, hey, listen, I've never met you before, uh, or this is my first time meeting mm -hmm. you, but I've been listening to your audios or I've been watching your videos yeah. and, and they're drawn from that inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's caused them to go out there and believe and go out there and accomplish their goals. So therefore, will the I Believe conference be coming to the UK? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and for now, for now, if persons want to get hold of the mm -hmm. I Believe, it's on your, how can they get hold yes, of it? Yes, we, we're actually um, right now in the beginning stages of mm -hmm. promoting the I Believe training day. Yeah. We had one in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, October yeah. the 1st. Great success. Mm -hmm. We have another one coming up in New York, yeah. October the 22nd. Uh, so my Instagram uh, page, my Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, has all of the details of yes. where we'll be. We'll be on the West Coast. Next year, we'll be a lot of international travel. Yeah. So UK will definitely be definitely. one of them. My wife has a huge following here in the UK as well. Yeah. Uh, so we'll definitely be doing something here in Mexico and Asia all around the world. To impact a billion, we yes. can't just stay in the United States. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, David, now tell me now, what is your uh, key uh, mantra, your, your key word? I know I believe is a strong mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. but is there like a key word yes. that you would say that in those lonely moments, those quiet times, those challenging moments, that keeps you going, mm -hmm. that we can share to our people? Yeah. You become what you think about. You become what you think about. You become what you think about. The richest man yeah. in the world to ever live, Solomon said, as yeah. a man thinking in his heart, so, so is he. he. So you actually mm. become what it is that you think about. Yes. But where do thoughts come from? Mm. Thoughts come from your five senses. Yes. When you see something, it invokes a thought. You mm. see these pair of glasses, it invokes a thought. You know, and when you hear something, it invokes a thought. It also comes from the enemy. Mm. And then it also comes from God. So every thought that comes into your life, you have to be able to filter it and say, okay, where is this thought coming from? Yeah. And does it line up with what God says about who I am? Mm -hmm. Someone says something negative about you, yeah. you completely throw that out because you know that it doesn't line up yes. with what God says about yes. you. A negative situation happens in your life. Mm -hmm. You go back to, what does God say about me? And those are the thoughts yeah. that you want to have renewing your mind yeah. over and over again. Now, I'm going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen, and come back to you where I speak to David about some key developments in the state and the state of the black community. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with David Emonite. Am I getting it right, David? Emonite. Emonite. I know, it's a tough one. <laughs> now, get, get it right, okay? I will you just... want to hear something funny? Yeah. If you spell my name yeah. two letters at a time, it actually says, I am on it, i.e. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Awesome. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never there you forget go. that. <laughs> David, one of the key things in the UK, and I've seen it in the States, is like the state of the black community. Yeah. Right. In the UK, they say the, the black community is at the bottom. Mm. Right. In the States now, with the killing of black people and lots of demonstration, there's a talk about the, the black dollar, mm -hmm. talk about the black pound. How do you, as a professional, successful black man in the States, rise above the challenge? And what is your key word to empower and to stimulate young black people mm -hmm. to take it to the next level? You know, my answer is actually very simple to this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an answer that I don't hear that often. Mm -hmm. The answer is love. At the root of every challenge, every situation yeah. that has ever happened in our lives, whether we're black, whether we're white, green, mm -hmm. yellow, it's all rooted in love. Mm -hmm. And us not showing that love to a fellow human being. Yeah. See, if I look at you as a brother, if I look at you as a sister, I'm going to treat you like that. Mm -hmm. Whether you are from a different race or from a different creed, or a different gender. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the issue. Yes. I think the issue is that love is, love is missing. Yes. Um, and if we can go back to that, we've taken God yes. out of our lives. And God is love. Mm -hmm. So with those situations, all I see is a lack of love being demonstrated. Mm -hmm. 
when someone is unjustly murdered. Yeah. Um, you know, they could say, well, I was protecting myself or this person was, you know, demonstrating or they could come up with some excuse. Yes, yes. But did you operate in love? Mm. Did you operate with the God kind of heart yes. while that situation was going on? Did you have empathy mm. for this person? Yes, you have to do your job. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to do everything that is necessary. But are you doing it in love? Because if you're doing it in love, yes. it is always going to produce a great result. Yes. But when you're doing it out of hate, mm. then it's going to produce a bad result. Mm. So I think that should be the message that we're talking about. Because I, me personally, I don't see color. Yes. But I realize other people do. And that's mm. fine. I'm not mm. saying I'm right and they're wrong or they're mm. right and I'm wrong. Mm. But what I do see is you're a child of God. Yes. So how do I treat you? I'm a child of God too, mm -hmm. so that means that you're my brother. So how am I gonna treat you? Even if you're wrong, mm -hmm. even if you're wrong, even if you're doing something that's wrong, if, if I'm in that position where I'm a policeman and I have to reprimand someone mm -hmm. for something that they're doing that's wrong, yes. I can do that yes. with love. Right. So, I can't. There, yeah. there's, there's, if I have a pure heart towards you as a brother, mm -hmm. Even though I have to correct you, you know, growing up, my parents c corrected me, yeah. all right? But they did it in love. Yes. And that's why we're, we're, we're where we are today. Right. If they did it out of hate, then no, things, things mm. would be very, very different. Mm. Mm. So I think that should be the message that, that, we, that we have. Um, more violence begets more violence. Mm. So taking a hate message to a hate message yeah. is only going to produce more hate. But light will shine in the darkness, yeah. and the darkness will not comprehend it. And that light is love. So therefore, we don't need Trump. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's a lot of people's opinion. That's a lot of people. But, but you know what? He's yeah. still a child of God. You know, you know, it's so funny you said that because uh, there's a few school of thoughts which have been saying that at the end of the day, God can use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Mm -hmm. And I'm not from the States. So I can keep in the balance and I can look at both of them and I can post Hillary and I can post Trump. And he said, why are you posting Trump? I said, God, I want everybody to hear what he's saying mm -hmm. at the same time. It's not about his octopus hands of eight fingers or whatever like that, you know. Right. But David, listen, it was great talking to you. What's the next plan? What's the next move now? Well, <clears throat> we are doing a lot of traveling right now, yeah. uh, me and my wife, and uh, we've put together uh, some courses. Uh, mm -hmm. She's actually running a I Believe boot camp right now. Okay. Uh, I actually just finished a 21-day I Believe Challenge, yes. uh, basically a three-week course. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now we're going to be doing a lot of traveling yes. and uh, speaking engagements uh, around the world. So we're excited about it. Well, I guess uh, Silburn TV will be one of your key <laughs> fans and following you. So somehow we can sort of build this relationship yes. which started. Yes. I believe that anything which starts small goes big. Um, but before we go, David, I want you to just share whatever you want to share with um, anybody out there. Mm -hmm. Just any last word that you want yeah. to share. Well, <clears throat> thank you for taking the time out to, mm -hmm. to listen, obviously, today. And don't take it for granted that you spent time with us uh, the last 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I would say that whatever it is that you want to accomplish in your life, the goals and the dreams that you have, the, the burning desire that you have, desire is a starting point of all achievement. Everything that you want to have happened, I want you to understand that it's already happened. The life that you want to live has already taken place. And now what you have to do is show the world how you did it. And that's how I live my life. You know, we're here in England, so I'll, I'll use this analogy here. If England was in the World Cup, all right, <laughs> that's pretty big out here, right? <laughs> England is in the World Cup. And for whatever reason, they're in the World Cup final. For whatever reason, maybe you're on vacation in Dubai or you're in vacation in Singapore and you can watch the match. But on your way back to your hotel, you heard on the radio mm. that England won five to four. Would you celebrate in the car? Yes, you would. Mm. But when you got back to your hotel, mm. you probably would still want to watch the match. Yes. Even though you know the end result, you will still want to watch it. And if after the first 15 minutes, England was down 2-0, mm -hmm. would you be worried? If at halftime they were down 3-0, would you be worried? Probably not. If they were down 4-0 and there was 20 mm -hmm. minutes left in mm -hmm. the match, 
would you be worried? You wouldn't. Why? Because you already know the end result. Yes. You would get even more excited about the last 20 minutes. Yes. So that's yes. what I want you to do with your life right yes. now. Get excited about where it is that you are because you already know what the end result is. David, listen, it was great having you, thank you. on the show. Thank you. And I wish you all the best. And one of the things I want to say is thank you so much for being open mm -hmm. and encouraging and uh, inviting mm -hmm. because you could have just ignored this strange man <laughs> and messaging you all day. I remember I messaged him all day and said, bro, I'm still sleeping. <laughs> I'm still jet lag. <laughs> because I got everything set. But, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say, and, and I said it before, but one of the, the picture that came to me, and this is for someone out there, is... Uh, Whenever God opened door, doors, and I say plural, doors will just keep opening. But just you got, you got to keep going through each one. Go keep going through each one. And I want you to grab the picture again of the traffic lights, which is on green. You will remember those days when you get a traffic light, which is on green, and it's just going through, just green, 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 green. And for someone out there, this is your season of abundance whereby all the doors will be open and all the lights will be green. So just go for it. And finally, to find out more about David, check our website, you'll find out more and I'll be posting more about him as well. And thank you so much for joining me on The Silburn Show, Twitter hashtag, you know the score. This is just a quick one that we did. Have a good day. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like, and don't forget to comment, but first subscribe. Want to stop for a second? Let's stop for a second. Yeah. It's okay. Wanted to do the show, you know, but you came a bit late. <laughs>